With this movie, we begin our section on the anime interface layout. Really basic stuff, but anime puts things in places that are slightly different, with slightly different expectations than what you might be accustomed to if you work with the Adobe tool sets or some of the others that are more popular that have kind of standardized your interface a little bit. To that extent, anime is a slightly a renegade and kind of has different meanings for where certain tools are, at least what their applications are. I would encourage you to go through this section if you're just checking into it. It sounds really basic, but I'm going to start using terminology based on this section. So when I say we're looking for something in the status bar, you know exactly what we're talking about. Really fast to go through it. And then we go through, in the following movies, the specifics for each one of these little sections and talk about how they're the same as some of the areas that you're familiar with and also how they're very different. Let's go ahead and take a look at the interface. So here we are with our initial layout that you see when you launch anime. Uh, sometimes if you've got the preference set, you get your character that automatically loads in there, your smiling anime character. I don't have that in this one. My colors here are probably different than yours, and by colors I mean the interface colors. I've neutralized everything to be gray. I'm going to reset my colors shortly and show you how to do that, but then it will allow you to change your working setup to something that suits your working style. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this workspace is divided up. The actual working area is this uh, big white spot. This is where your scene takes place. This is where you build your characters. This is where you see what the camera sees before you render. This purple line going around the perimeter right here is your production frame, and it's showing you the actual area that's going to render. You can kind of think of it as a TV screen onto your animated scene. You can have things happening over outside of the area, but it simply won't show up in the final render, but it helps you as a visual aid know exactly where things are in your scene, and if you want something to come in from the side, you'll know right where it is. Down at the bottom of this working box right here, we've got a status bar. This status bar gives you all sorts of useful hints and clues as you're learning the program, so that when you have certain tools enabled or selected or objects on your working area here, it will give you a hint as what you're supposed to do next. We do have some transport controls or movie controls that you can play your animation as you're working on it. We can also divide up our screen down here into uh, different methods and we can change camera views on that. I'll show you how to do that in an upcoming movie as well. On the left side we've got a generic tools palette. Now this is one of the key differences between Anime Studio and some of the other drawing programs you may be accustomed to using like Adobe Illustrator. The tools palette here has different categories. We've got drawing tools, which is where you make shapes. Well, that makes pretty good sense. And it's also how you change some shapes. But then we also have fill tools. Unlike programs like Adobe Illustrator, Anime Studio, it's got some great drawing tools, but it doesn't uh, consider the drawing tools and the fill tools to be one and the same. So we've got some different uses for those that we'll get to. We also have some boning tools, which is how you connect separate drawn parts together to make your character for animation and constrain and control movement. Then we have a layers tool and the nearest thing I can compare this to is like a skew tool in Adobe Illustrator except it affects everything on a given layer at one time. Just like Photoshop, just like Illustrator, just like Painter, you can work with layers and animate. The layers palette is over here on the right hand side and there's some very specific layers for doing specific things. You don't have one layer and you, you can't do everything on a single layer. There's different kinds of layers to work with. Finally down here in the bottom of the left hand side where we've got the tools palette, we've got a camera tool and a workspace tool. The camera tool is just what you think it is. The stage that you work on or your workspace, think of it like an actual real stage that you would go to a theater to. You set up your animation and for all practical purposes usually your animation is going to be cardboard cutouts but you can use the camera tools to move your camera through the scene and you can turn and look at your layers differently. Likewise there are some workspace tools here that change the entire workspace and we'll talk about why you would want to do that in an upcoming movie as well. We have our timeline controls down here. This changes its behavior depending on tools you have selected or layers you have selected. We'll deal with that very specifically coming up. 
the layers palette I already mentioned. And finally, we have the styles palette over here. This is where you change how the shapes you draw and the fills you create to present themselves, meaning how they've got different colors, they've got patterns, if there's any kind of masking going on, or if you want to change your line weight, this is where you do it in the styles palette. So with that overview, let's come back in with our next movie and start looking specifically at the tools palette and how that plays with some of the other elements here in Anime Studio.